Hey guys, what is up? Red Pen Mining here. How you guys all doing? Hope you're all doing really well and having a really great day. In this video, I want to show you guys the Ethereum hash rate for a SQRL FK33 or Forest Kitten 33. And this is something I've had now for over a year. And I did make a video about this back in September 17th of 2020, where I was able to get about 45 or 43 mega hash on this FK33. But now, there has been some new, I guess, optimization and also Team Redminer has enabled FPGA mining in their software. So this is pretty cool. I'm able to get 61.45 mega hash at about 100 watts or so. Okay, so looking at the power and if we go specific to the PCIe 1, you can see here it's about 90, it's going from 97, 98 watts to 100 watts. And I'll show you my setup here that this FPGA, this FK33, is only plugged in with a single six pin for power, okay? This cable right here, and it's going into the PCIe uh, Elmore Labs PMD uh, watt meter here, and uh, the other side goes into a breakout board, eight pin to six pin here, an HP server PSU, which then goes into <laughs> another uh, watt meter here just to show at the wall which shows 112 or 113 and then we're at 100 here so the delta is about 12 or 13 watts and that's because I guess this HP server PSU is efficient at more about 50% or less or more and it, right now it's only drawing about 112 watts so that's that's really low so that's why we see the disparity there in the watts being drawn because it's just inefficient at lower levels anyways in this video I'm gonna be showing you guys I guess how I got this working in Ubuntu I tried getting it working in Hive OS and it wouldn't give so I'm gonna show you guys the steps that I did to get it to work uh, we're gonna go in the computer I'll show you guys a few steps and uh, just talk about this thing a bit more but also if you're wondering how it's communicating to my ITX test bench it's only communicating by this USB micro cable okay so it's plugged into the back of the FPGA just like this and the USB cable goes into the back of the ITX board that's it you guys may be wondering Red Panda where's the power for the riser is the riser have power or where's the USB that goes into the X1 slot and no Look at this, this riser has no PCIe power, no USB, and I'll show you the other side here, no Molex and no, no six pin PCIe. It's just a placeholder, okay? So really, the only thing that this FPGA is being just powered is the six pin and communication with the USB uh, into the computer. That's, that's it. That's all there is. It's pretty, pretty awesome. And so yeah, just judging by the efficiency that we are getting on this thing, at about 61 mega hash and 100 watts is quite incredible. Let's go into the computer just in case anyone out there that has an FK33. I don't think many of you guys will have this. You guys can let me know down below, but in case some people stumble upon this video and are wondering how to use Team Red Miner with, you know, an FK33 or one of these Xilinx Varium C1100s. Okay, so yeah, but today I'm showing you the SQRL Forest Kitten 33 demonstration. So, okay, I will see you guys on the computer. We're gonna have some fun here and show you how it works. Okay, so I just want to start off with if people are, or you guys are looking to buy these, you know, FPGAs, the FK33 specifically from SQRL, that company is now bankrupt and no longer in business. So that's, that's a whole nother thing. You, you guys, yeah. So you can't really find these in official means anymore. If you're looking for them, in my opinion, I wouldn't go out and buy this right now as I think this is only really good for mining Ethereum at the moment, maybe something else in the future as FPGAs are programmable. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I think the price of these right now are just way too much with what we know is coming in the future so anyways let's go guys team red miner version 0 0.9.0 so they added the support for fpga eth hash mining and let me just read a little tidbit here from team red miner uh, they now have support to mine eth hash on two fpga products based on the xilinx fpgas uh, the xilinx varium c1100 and the sqrl forest kitten 33 and so just real quick the fk33 
has the VU33 chip uh, from Xilinx and it has the HBM2 memory. So that's what makes it really awesome to mine, I guess, Ethereum on this uh, FK33. Uh, I do not have a C1100. I'd actually never heard of this one before. And disclaimer, I am not an FPGA expert. Never was, never will be. I, 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 I don't know much about FPGAs, okay guys? So uh, just a little disclaimer there. I'm doing this as I go. I'm learning. Uh, everything I've been reading, I'll be doing for you guys is what I learned as I go. So anyways, so FPGA is officially supported on Linux. However, Windows users can mine using a Linux VM with USB pass-through for the FPGA USB JTAG connections. So you could probably install VMware Workstation and just do USB pass-through with the FPGA. So that's cool. TRM does not support setting voltages on FPGA boards and is only able to read some of the available onboard telemetry, uh, memory voltage, board power, etc. As a result, there are not many knobs available for tuning, though the ones that are uh, will be discussed in the individual board sections below. So I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll talk about that later on. Okay, so let's get this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what I did uh, to get it going there wasn't really any like how to uh, there's a little bit of a how to in team red miner uh to get the commands going but not typically when uh, someone doesn't have i don't know a, a certain linux uh, version installed or using windows and maybe doesn't know what vmware workstation is or something like that in my case i decided to install just ubuntu all right a linux version ubuntu there are many different versions out there i'm sure it'll work the same but in my case what i did okay step one i downloaded the latest of ubuntu on my windows machine here downloaded rufus is a software which you can you select the iso so i download it into my downloads folder and you select the ubuntu iso you plug in next three burn the image of ubuntu iso with rufus to a usb stick okay so this is where you plug in a usb stick of your choice whatever you know eight gigabyte stick that'll be good enough or four gigabyte stick will be good enough and uh you're just gonna be using this rufus software free to download to put the image the iso on that usb stick okay so the next step is for plug in the usb into a pc a raspberry pi or something that you can install Ubuntu on and has USB ports. So in my case, I just installed it on my ITX uh, little Celeron processor computer. Okay, next is uh, once you get Ubuntu installed or whatever Linux version that you use, there are many different out there, like I said. Once you get into it, you can download Team Red Miner and you can then extract it within the downloads folder. So uh, let me just show you, I can show you guys that in, in real time here. So let me, let's remote into it. And I do have RDP enabled now. I could not get VNC enabled uh, in my case here, which was uh, really strange. That'll be in step nine to 10 optional, enable RDP or VNC so that you can use another computer to remote into it uh, in my case, because if you don't have like a monitor or keyboard or mouse or something in like a different room and it's small and you don't want to deal with it, you can use another computer like I'm doing and remote into it like that. But anyways, step five, download Team Red Miner. So what I did, under linux here in ubuntu i just went to firefox i had the browser here and i went to tm team red miner click on this and it should take you to the github and then i downloaded the linux uh, tgz here okay so click on that and it's gonna save you want to do save file press ok and it's gonna go into your downloads folder so if you click the top here and once that's done, you just right click that open containing folder. We're going to go here. So this is where uh, you guys will see this now. Okay. So the downloads folder, which I already have one here. So in my case, what I did, I right click the, the TGZ file, right? And then I did extract to, and so I extracted it to right in this, this downloads folder here. And then I renamed the folder because uh, we're going to have to do some Linux commands here. It's going to be a lot easier. So you don't have, you know, v0.9.0 dash Linux. I just renamed it to, to Team Red Miner. It makes things a lot easier. Okay. And then uh, let's go back to the number here. So uh, we did that, renamed, we did that. I shut down the Ubuntu PC and plugged in the USB coming from the FK33. Okay. So this is the next step you do, uh, I did to get the FK33 working. Number nine, turn the PC back on. And then the next step I did was enable RDP or VNC. I couldn't get VNC working, but uh, you guys can Google, Google how to do that, okay? Many how-tos out there. 
Next step, number 10, open up terminal. All right, so this is where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins. So we're gonna go to, uh, for me over here, and we're gonna go to terminal, uh, should be right here. Okay, so that's gonna open up. Okay, so since I saved it in the downloads folder, we have to go there. So we're gonna go to C, we're gonna type in CD, uh, downloads, okay? We gotta have the capital D because if you don't do that, it uh it won't find it. it says no such file or directory so you gotta do cd capital d uh that's what it is in ubuntu ubuntu anyway and then uh cd you gotta do cd to the team red minor folder that we just renamed okay so team red minor and there we go so we are in that part now once you plug it in you can also uh do this command here sudo dash uh, dot team red minor uh list devices so we're gonna go back here okay we're gonna paste that in a lot easier Okay, hit enter and oh, I'm gonna hit my password here and it should see that it detected the uh, you can see the FK 33 okay the VU 33p uh, Xilinx chip there so that's really cool all right so now once you verify that now you can go ahead and I uh, have the how-to here we're gonna be doing the whole string with your ETH address the worker name and uh, the core clock, mem clock, you know, different stuff here. So I'm gonna, actually, I have my own like personal one here. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing so you guys can see it easier in here. We're gonna paste it in here. So this is the whole string that I used to get it to mine, okay? We're mining to ethermine, and I just have a test Ethereum address and then the name FK33. Okay, there we go, looks better. All right, so yeah, this is what it looks like. And then we're gonna hit enter and it's going to start mining it says failed to list opencl to platforms uh that's because it's yeah i guess opencl is for amd uh we're doing fpga you can see the fpga is loading the bitstream bitstream loaded successfully that's really awesome and there we go it's going to start building the dag build for epoch 461 loading light cache for epoch 461 um so we're just going to let this go and uh it's going to start mining uh it, it takes about another minute or two uh before it starts going so it's just ramping up right now uh the power consumption still says 29 watts uh as it's starting up and then it'll go to 100 watts okay so while that's going let me explain uh, a few other things here so yeah that that's it that's how you get it working in ubuntu uh like i said i could not get it work in hive os i I wasn't smart enough to do that and uh, maybe you guys can if anyone that has one of these tries it in hive os let me know but anyways notes so it can be done in windows then in a vm i think i explained that earlier and then the second thing here i saw someone uh, named verosa on the fpga discord who tried the uh, 555 core 1100 memory but it wasn't recommended i think potential for the fpga to blow up or anything so do it at your own risk once you play with these numbers because they're kind of like unlocked per se so there's no limit to whatever number that you're going to do like higher than this and could potentially burn out the fpga so you don't want to do that okay uh for if anyone that has one of these so but in my case i just did the stock numbers here that team red miner had in their readme okay so if we go back to the readme uh, they do have an example here a typical command for starting trm looks like this okay and it has all of the parameters right here in their readme okay the fpga fpga uh guide dot text okay so that's that's it guys that's that's it it's mining now so now it's at 61.45 mega hash and at the wall or at the at the meter between 97 and 100 watts at the pcie uh six pin so that's really cool this is see accepted share uh first one and uh i did verify after an hour when i tested it after an hour it did show the reported and average and stuff at the pool so uh, it seems to be working as is as it was uh true to what team red miner said okay guys that's it really long video hopefully you guys enjoy let me know your thoughts and uh, let me know if anyone else has one of these I'm, I'm curious to know how many community members uh, the viewers subscribers you guys if you guys have any of this so i think this is really cool thank you team red miner for enabling this now i can have my fpga mining now and not just sitting and doing nothing all right appreciate you all thanks for watching have a good one and peace out